Hello, uh, we're doing today a distributed model with HMS. Uh, and this is uh, yeah, how the model will look at the end and we will uh, hopefully uh, get some results where we get the hydrograph in the outlet of the catchment. So yeah, let's do it. And for that, I'm going to use this example that we used la last week in a, in a course for Civile, that is a Spanish company. Uh, really good in uh, water engineering, river engineering. So if you want to check out the page, this is it, you got it. If you are going to work in Spain, I, I will recommend, but uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's do, let's do it. So I'm going to start for, um, from an almost a scratch model. I'm going to rose, I'm going to go to my desktop, my HMS. V03. So what I just input here is my terrain and I also have the catchment and I, I can also see the parameters, characteristics, suit basin. And here I could see the, the longest flow path, the, the slope, um, and I could also see within the catchment the area that I have. So yeah, I have a lot of parameters which are, for example, really useful to, to know the concentration time. So the first, first thing I'm going to do, is, because it is going to be a distributed um, model, I'm going to discretize my catchment, going to discretization method, structure, discretization, projection, UTM 29 north, cent, 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 cent. cell size 50, Losses, I will uh, I will input the curve number grid, but I don't have it yet, so it's gray out. Transform method, I'm gonna change it to Mod Clark. Yes, and also the base um, flow method recession, I'm not gonna use it. I am not gonna consider in this case a base flow. And the losses, uh, the transform that I'm gonna use is a concentration time of one hour, but I could calculate it from Kirpich formula or others or your local formulas or if you have some empirical data or whatsoever. And the storage coefficient in this case, of course there are many methods, but I'm going to use this formula coming from the USDACE, Mainstream Columbia River H well, this page that uh, recommend to use this, this uh, formula to get the this coefficient, but of course there are many others and for that actually the HMS tutorial guide that you can get in help tutorials and guides are really useful. But to keep it simple, we are just going to use this formula that gives a coefficient for this catchment roughly of 0.5. And let's move on. So the next thing I'm going to add is my grid for precipitation and curve number. So I'll add not just the precipitation fit set, but the precipitation frequency grid and I'm gonna call it T100 and I'm gonna also add the curve number is CS curve number grid new and I'm gonna call it curve number so what happened here it's that this folded folders got created but the data is not there yet I have to link it to my data so for the rain i'm going to use directly my geotiff and i select wherever you have the data but in my case here uh, units millimeters scale factor one and for my curve number i did record not, and we are going to input it as dss not as a diff because it's i couldn't manage to get the tip in so i transformed it to dss and it accepted it so there's another video explaining this uh, but uh, yeah we're just using this method now the dss file name i got a cn raster this one the dss path name we check here select all set path name good and my next step is because I input my precipitation is my uh, daily precipitation, so I have to distribute it along the day. And for this, I'm going to use per data manager. Where is it? 
it is somewhere but it's difficult to find it's something like precipitation frequency thingy I believe I can find it or maybe it's not here hmm, maybe it's not here I'm gonna look at my backup percentage curve per data it's a percentage curve that's what I'm looking for so it's in per data that's for sure but it's a percentage curve this is it and I'm just gonna call it T100 and this is something that I can get from my EDF curve so the way that the rain is distributed depending on the duration if, which I'm not gonna go into details now into the theory of this but from the IDF course and the, the duration different duration five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes 24 hours you can get the distribution so in this case I'm just gonna bring it from my excel sh sheet that must contain the value 0 0 and 100 and 100 we go to the table and yeah we can see the graph that goes from 0 0 to 100 100 with the distribution and last step maybe not last but we are coming to an end meteorologic model manager um, I like to put it the name with uh, the return period that I am anal uh, analyzing 100 meteorologic model awesome and we are gonna go for hypothetical storm yes we want to change it and i am gonna link it with the basin that i just created basin one because it's the only one that i have and when i go to my hypothetical storm i'll choose my user specified pattern for method storm pattern to t100 that is the grid that i input a storm duration is 24 hours because it's the precipitation that i have in my raster my raster has data of precipitation for 24 hours precipitation method precipitation frequency grid the grid ah. hmm I messed up sir chin 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 or not yes the grid is still 100 and the storm, ah, the storm is the percentage curve. Okay, yes, the storm patterns is the percentage curve, but I call it T100, so it's actually this file here. And uh, the grid T100 is the precipitation that I input in the grid. It's just because I'm calling maybe everything the same. Maybe it would be more useful to call it T100 uh, grid data or T100 uh, percentage curve, so it's more intuitive at the beginning. Computation point on iron reduction on. This is interesting because sometimes if we have a very weak area, we shall reduce the, the, the precipitation to adapt uh, for the storm moving over our catchment. I'm going to ignore this now, but just so you know, if we have a big catchment and maybe we have formulas that, uh, that correlate these relations in between the precipitation maximum values and the area of the catchment, you could input that here going to components per data manager and going to area the reduction functions okay and finally uh, in the loss method of my catchment I'm gonna set the grid that I input now perfect so I got my data in and I can go to compute create compute I'm gonna use the depth area analysis that is specific for hypothetical storm we could use others. I also have used the simulation run, but we are not going to use go into this now. We are going to call it T100 because I'm calling T100 to everything. But I can call it um, the, the area analysis. Ah, we are leaving this. Uh, next, next, uh, next net because I just have one basin, I just have one meteorological modeling, so it's simple. And finally, I have to set the start date and end date of my simulation. And of course, this depends on how you have your settings in your computer. But in my case, we can go this way. And start date 0000. 
time interval, the time it's going to make the computer. I always recommend a minute because in this case, it's one day simulation, it doesn't take a lot of time. And I think that's it. We're going to run it. Mm, ah, analysis point. I have to include here my sub base. And now, save and run. Hmm. A start time is not defined for T100 depth area. Okay. And sometimes this happens. I put the numbers, but they just got deleted. So, uh, ah, because I put a point where it shouldn't be. It's just going to be like January 2000. And for the start time, 0000, zero, zero, zero. yeah, that goes right like this 0 to January. 2000, 2000, and end it. So this way I compute 24 hours. If I click save, now the numbers stay. If they were wrong, they will just disappear when I save. So this is a good sign. Current number grid is not set for surfacing one. Okay, it's good that these errors are showing up so we can actually look into them, but then curve number grid is not set. Okay, so we save and we run again. And now it looks promising. Promising. We got some results. Yeah, and then we got the flow distributed for the 24 hour simulation. In the 1st of January, getting a big discharge where a little over 18 cubic meter per second and of course now comes the engineering critical part of uh, uh, knowing if our results do make sense or do not make sense uh, analyzing the data but uh, we got our model to run and it's a simple method it's a simple model but of course you can have many catchments you can run many return periods and yeah I hope useful i at least it serves to me well lately and uh, i totally recommend you to yeah hms is uh, doing some good stuff lately so yeah have a nice day if you have any comments any questions they are very welcome and yeah <laughs> that's it bye bye